Hey, this is Avi Gutman with another Ask Me Anything event brought to you by QuantReasoning.com. I invite you to join me live next time. We do this every Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern, and you can attend for free by starting your free trial at QuantReasoning.com. If you were to just read up to here, and then let's say I ask you if you were allowed to highlight just one thing from those two sentences, what would it be? Okay, you're, you're all correct. The fact that they started at the same time from the same point. And then we pause again here and say, okay, they have different speeds. If I call them C and S for short, C is faster than S. And you might even at that point consider either thinking this or actually jotting this down in your notes, starting with a faster one, setting up a ratio. C is faster than S. By what ratio, I don't know. And I might never know. Maybe if I read on, it'll just say, how much is Candace faster than Sabrina? She's three miles per hour faster. Okay, if she's three miles per hour faster, can I infer the ratio? No, I don't know if the speeds are four and one or 10 and seven. Those are different ratios, so I might never know. Also, maybe they'll just not give me any information about how much faster. Maybe they're just saying C is faster than S, period. And then I also wouldn't be able to infer ratio because that's all they said. But as I continue reading, and you know, the next place I would pause is probably at the period. I'm interested in the speeds. I know that C is faster than S. But how much faster? Is, is she twice as fast? Is she thrice as fast? Like, what's the ratio of their speeds? 46 to 42, or if you reduce to the smallest integers that fit, 23 to 21. So, so Candace is not quite twice as fast as Sabrina. She's 23 21 as fast. 23 21 as fast as Sabrina. That's the ratio of their speeds. How many laps, so we're talking about distance, talking about distance, how many laps around the track had Candace completed when? The next time that Candace and Sabrina were together at the starting point. So I'm going to take a long pause there and I'm going to ask myself, given that I have the ratio of the speeds, what can I do if I wanted to think about the ratio of the distances? Like what's the relationship between speed and distance? This is a multiplicative story. If I wanted to know the ratio of their distances, I need to first consider how much time they spent relative to each other riding their bicycles. Do we know who spent more time and, and by what ratio? Like what, what do we know about the amounts of times that they spent? The exact same amount of time spent, because they started at the same time, and they're talking about them being together the next time. So at that point, they would have each traveled the same amount of time. So if the time is the same time, and the speeds are a ratio of 23 to 21, what can we say about their distances? Yeah, here I would have 23 multiplied by 1 is 23. And here I would have 21 multiplied by 1 is 21, because it's a multiplicative story. So we can say that since Candace traveled 23 21 as fast as Stacy did, as Sabrina, excuse me, and they traveled for the same amount of time, therefore Candace traveled 23 21 as far, 23 21 as many miles, or 23 21 as many laps as Sabrina did because the time was the same time. And if the ratio was a lot easier, then I think it would be an easier question because people would be able to intuitively say, look, if Candace is three times as fast as Sabrina, then Candace will have traveled three times as far as Sabrina because they traveled for the same amount of time. Like that would have been a lot more intuitive for people. But the, the concept is the same concept, just the numbers are not as nice. So let's write down our big inference here, which is that Candace will have traveled exactly 23 21ths as many laps as Sabrina 
when they uh, meet at the starting point, when they next meet. So we have a ratio here that is fully reduced. If I'm just looking at this thing here that's highlighted in yellow, and guess what? This ratio has an integer constraint because of that. This thing that I highlighted in yellow implies that my ratio has an integer constraint. I have a video on the channel about the importance of an integer constraint in the context of ratios. And what we learn from that video that I'll link to is that thanks to the integer constraint and thanks to the fact that our ratio here is fully reduced, meaning 23 and 21 don't have a common factor, we can make the following inference. The actual number of laps that Candace has traveled has to be some multiple of 23. And the actual number of laps that Sabrina has traveled has to be the same multiple of 21, whatever that multiple is. So whatever, whatever the scale factor is for this ratio, they both have the same scale factor, of course, because that's, that's the point of a ratio. But that scale factor has to be an integer because of the integer constraint and because of the fact that 23 and 21 have no common factors. That's the power of an integer constraint in a ratio. And again, why do we have an integer constraint? Because of the words that I have highlighted here in the question stem in yellow. The words, the next time, the very next time they meet at the starting point, those three words, the next time, imply that the, this scale factor is one. And the question is asking about Candice specifically. So the answer is, B. So I know that it doesn't look like it's a ratio question at all. And even if it did look like a ratio question, it's not obvious that there's an integer constraint. And those two things make it, in my opinion, a very, very hard question. In my opinion, this is a very, this is like, I, I would say this is as hard as it gets for this category of question on the GMAT, I, I believe this is as, ha as hard as it gets. And I think what makes it so hard is those two things. Number one, it looks nothing like a ratio question. And number two, even if you figure it out that it's a ratio question, you still need to figure out that there's an integer constraint. And that's not at all obvious in my opinion. Hey, I'm just gonna interrupt my own video for a moment here. If you're finding value in this video, please let me know in the comments below and give this video a thumbs up. It really motivates me to keep uploading a new video every day. All right, back to the video. If you were to ask me, Avi, what's the takeaway from this question that I would be able to apply to other questions of this category? The takeaway has to do with, number one, if a question appears to have nothing to do with ratios, there's a 60% chance it's a ratio question. And I say that kind of half jokingly, half serious. If a question appears to have nothing to do with ratios, there's a 60% chance it's a ratio question. And the second takeaway is that the importance of an integer constraint. So if you are looking at a ratio, you have to actively ask yourself, is there an integer constraint here? The distances will have the same ratio as the speeds if the time is the same time. And you can apply that to a totally different subject matter. For example, if you and I invest different amounts of money for a year, then as long as the simple annual interest rate is the same, then the amounts of interest that we earn at the end of the year will be the same ratio as the amounts of money that we invested. If you invested thrice as much as me, then you'll earn thrice as much as me in interest as long as the simple annual interest rate is the same. And it's the same thing here. If you and I have different speeds, but we're traveling for the same amount of time, then the ratio of our distances will match the ratio of our speeds for the same reason, right? Because it's a direct correlation. So in any multiplicative story, you need to just look at what are the components of this multiplicative story. In most multiplicative stories on the GMAT, there are just three components. Rate times time equals distance. Average times number of terms equals sum. Price times quantity equals revenues. All right, so most multiplicative stories have three components. And as long as, it, long as you keep one of the three components the same, then the other two components will be either directly correlated or inversely correlated, but it'll be the same ratio, essentially, either the same ratio or the inverse of the ratio. But if you have something that has four elements, for example, principal multiplied by simple annual interest rate multiplied by number of years equals earned interest, this has four components. 
And so there it could be more complicated because you'd say, well, even if I keep that the same, I still have two other loose canons that are going to impact the ratio of the interest or vice versa. So I give a strategy for solving these things in my book where you build a ratio table. Horizontally, you'd have the components just like I have here. And then vertically, you'd have the things you're comparing. So you, maybe you're comparing investment A to investment B, and you'd go through each of those, and it'd be a ratio. So you'd have a fraction times fraction times fraction equals fraction. And from that, like if you apply that principle back to this question, you'll realize, and you can prove it to yourself on paper, that yeah, of course, if the time is the same time, then the ratio of the uh, speeds will match the ratio of the distances, and it would look like this. Speed, time, distance, Sabrina, Candice, and you'd say, okay, I know the speeds are 21 to 23. I know the time is the same time, and if you multiply those fractions, of course you're going to get the same fraction there as you had there, because you're multiplying by 1 over 1. If each of them did three laps, then they didn't spend the same amount of time, and we would say the distance is the same, and then we would infer that this then must be the reciprocal. So this kind of setup, I think, is very useful for multiplicative stories when you're dealing with ratios. And you can practice that setup a lot in, uh, in the multiplicative stories part, uh, chapter of, of the book. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.